Izuku Midoriya, also known as the hero Deku, finally gets to show off his brand new skills and abilities that he learned from Gran Torino. And All Might finally decides to tell us the origins of the one for all quirk. All that and more in this week's eye-opening episode of My Hero Academia. So many things to talk about in this week's episode of My Hero Academia, so let's just start at the beginning. The beginning of this week's episode makes it very clear that Izuku Midoriya has finished up his training with Gran Torino and he proudly takes on the name of Deku as he moves forward to try and master the one for all ability. Something that Gran Torino hounds him about a little bit more in this episode. Despite the fact that he did really good against Hero Killer Stain, he still has a lot to learn. Not to mention he really needs to learn about the true origins of one for all if he is going to be moving forward as simply Having this quirk brings about a tremendous amount of responsibility, especially when taking down a very certain evil force, one that is introduced at the very end of the episode. But before we get to that, we return to UA High School, where the students are getting ready to be thrown through the ringer yet again in a training sequence at Field Gamma, which is essentially this giant battlefield which consists of factories and industrial places, which is all set up in like a maze and labyrinth zone, and our heroes are going to break up in groups of four of five teams, and they're actually all going to go outside the perimeter of this massive field, and they're going to have to work their way into the center so that they can actually save All Might in this training session. Now, of course, they're going to be able to utilize all of their quirks, and some of them have some pretty extreme advantages. In the very first round, and unfortunately the only round that we actually do get to see, we have, of course, Izuku Midoriya, who's going to be using the One for All abilities, and we actually get to see how far he has come since the last arc of the series, which completely shocks all of his classmates when they see how incredibly badass he is as he uses One for All to jump across all of these massive beams and pipes. We also have Ojiro with a massive tail using that to be able to wrap around these pipes and sling himself forward with a lot of momentum. You have Tenya Ida, who is incredibly freaking fast. There's Mina Ashido, who is using her weird acid abilities to sort of like skate across all of the objects. And then of course there's Hanta Sero, who seems like he was perfectly made for a training session like this as he's able to extend his tape all over the place and he's able to gain a lot of high ground and this is the thing that surprised me the most. I honestly thought that Izuku Midoriya was going to win. He was doing so well when he finally started to use his one for all abilities, impressing everyone when they saw him jumping through the air with his body coursing with all of that one for all energy. Unfortunately, he makes one false move and he ends up falling directly into the abyss, which allows Haunta Sero to win. Now, I like that Sero won because this is definitely going to give him a lot of confidence, especially after everything that happened after the UA Sports Festival with Shoto Todoroki just completely wasting his ass. So, Sero, good for you, man. Despite the fact that Izuku did lose, he still managed to show everybody what he has been learning, which some of them are impressed by it. Katsuki Bakugo, of course, is incredibly pissed off when he sees how far that he has gone. The way he sees it is that Deku started getting stronger while he was focusing more on just his hairstyle, which thankfully goes back to normal in this episode. Katsuki looks completely wrong with his hair completely smoothed down. But I love this little moment right here. It just emphasizes the intense rivalry between these characters, and it's not too dissimilar from, like, Goku and Vegeta's rivalry in Dragon Ball, or even Naruto and Sasuke's rivalry in Naruto. As soon as the training segment is over, All Might demands that Deku meets him after school, and that's when he's finally going to tell him about the origin of the One for All ability, which is quite epic in my opinion. And what I really love about it is that they actually delve far into the past of what it was like before there was, like, this organized association of heroes. You get to see that there was actually a lot of discrimination against those with superpowers, and a lot of just the normal humans wanted there to be, like, some segregation amongst the groups. And there was this one villain who finally stood up, and he utilized this ability, which was not called One for All, but all for one. And this ability allowed him to take people's quirks away and make them his own. But it also allowed him to give these quirks out to other people and even manipulate them in a number of different ways. And some people would use these quirks and be able to use them to their fullest, and other people would turn into these brain-dead zombies. Basically, this is our very first clue as to seeing how these Nomu creatures 
are created. Now, we even go a little bit further into this guy's past where we learn that this user of the All For One ability had a brother, and the brother was completely different. So, basically, All For One is able to imbue his brother with these powers, which is like a combination of all these things that he's created, and he calls it one for all, which again is tremendously powerful, but also has the ability to be transferred to other people. So the brother now has this extreme power and realizes that he's able to cultivate it over a period of time, pass it on to various people. Eventually, one for all is going to be powerful enough to take down the corrupted all for one. And, as if that weren't enough, the episode could have ended right there, and it was tense as hell. When All Might was telling that story and stretched out his arms and his eyes started glowing, I was just sucked in the entire time. But make sure to stay after the credits for this week's episode, as we get our very first glimpses of the main villain of the entire series, Mr. All For One himself, who is one creepy-ass looking individual. His entire face is basically destroyed. And I'm guessing this is what happened when he had his big epic confrontation with All Might, which is almost certainly what happened to All Might, where he started to get really hurt and had that massive wound on his side. But this guy got hurt really bad too. His entire face is basically just like mangled scar tissue. It looks creepy as shit, and he's hooked up to all these tubes and things, which are trying to keep him alive and regenerate his body. It's pretty clear that he's trying to become even more powerful than before, and bring all these villains together into this massive organization, so that he can continue his campaign against everything that is good, and All Might as well. As well as bringing up the character of Tomura Shigaraki, who basically it seems as if he is trying to sort of transfer some brand new abilities to him, and prep him and transform him into the next generation of super villains. It's really, really exciting, and I especially love it because it now gives Izuku Midori even more responsibility outside of having a superpower which is incredibly strong. Now Izuku Midori is going to have to accept the fact that he might have to fight some villains, and he's going to have to do it for the betterment of mankind, and he's the one who has to do it, as he's the only one who truly can. Not to mention, this all-for-one guy is probably going to be heading right for Izuku Midori. So, what's the rundown? On this week's episode of My Hero Academia, stellar, super solid episode right here. Uh, what I think I love most about it was sort of like the metaphor for the differences between One for All and All for One. They both sort of represent the philosophical ideologies of both group, with One for All being a super ability that is used to benefit people, to give to people, to make the world a better place, whereas All for One is all about selfish endeavor. It's all about taking everything for oneself, all the power, all for you. It's the perfect way to demonstrate that these guys are the bad guys and these guys are the good guys. But really, this was an episode that was just like packed to the brim with tons of content. The small scene at the beginning with Gran Torino saying goodbye to freaking Izuku Midori was great. Not to mention they actually explained why Gran Torino is not like a super well-known hero. The only reason he has a hero license and wears that costume is because he wanted to utilize his quirk Whenever he really wanted, he wouldn't know. He wanted no restrictions. He's not necessarily a normal hero, although I still have a feeling there's a lot more to his backstory, and it probably has something to do with All Might's previous master. And speaking of which, All Might tries to talk to Izuku about that in this episode, but just cannot bring himself to do that quite yet. It's pretty obvious they're still wanting to build up the drama of this, and I'm sure it's certainly going to come to a head much later on in this arc. That and just the whole sequence of them actually going to Field Gamma and going through this training sequence is awesome. It definitely reminded me of some of the uh, earlier parts of the first half of the series, and it also just reminds us that these are students who still have a lot to learn, and some of them do have some strengths, which despite the fact might not be as super powerful as, say, Shoto Todoroki or even what Izuku Midoriya can do, but their abilities can definitely give them an edge depending on the situation. Like when Saro actually won that thing in this week's episode. It was awesome. Not to mention there was of course just a little bit of humor in this episode as well. Like the fact that we have uh, Minoru who is still completely obsessed with all the ladies in the class. And there's a great scene which is like something out of Porky's. Does anybody remember the movie Porky's from the 80s? Well, basically, he ends up looking through this hole in the wall, which goes to the bathroom on the other side where all the girls are, and he just goes to this entire tirade of mentioning all of the very distinctive body types of these girls, and he starts looking through the hole, and Kyoka uses her earphone jack abilities to basically stab him right in the eye. Now, the scene is funny because it's very slapsticky, but it's made even more funny by the fact that Kyoka is more upset because Minoru didn't mention anything about her. 
It's little moments of levity like this that adds just a lot of great character to all of these amazing people. This was a great episode, which was building up some great backstory for the One for All ability, the All for One. We finally got our main villain, our very first glimpses of him, and it looks like the next arc in the series is going to involve a fun camping trip! So, let's get excited for that. This was a solid addition to the My Hero Academia anime franchise, and you should definitely check it out. Solid episode, 5 out of 5 from me. Check it out, guys. If any of you did watch this week's episode, make sure to tell me what you thought about it in the comments section below. What did you think of that training sequence? Did you get all excited when you saw Izuku Midoriya finally using his abilities in front of everyone in a super confident way? What did you think of the introduction of the all-for-one abilities? And what do you hope to see from the next big camping trip arc of the series? Thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all of my anime reviews, including more on My Hero Academia. Make sure to use your quirk ability to smash that like button. Share this video with all your friends. I'd really appreciate it appreciate it. Thank you all again for watching, and as always, stay dandy, baby!